so we'll begin looking at the electrochemistry tutorial sheet we have up to about 10 questions that we need to actually have a look at so at the end of this video you should be able to answer all these questions without any challenges okay so the students that are registered you really have learned in that topic all the basic concepts about electrochemistry so these are just like extra questions to review if you've understood the entire topic so question one says in a galvanic cell do electrons travel from the anode to the cathode or cathode to the anode and we need to explain that so electrons in a galvanic cell travel from the anode to the cathode so on the anode that's where oxidation occurs and then at the cathode that's where reduction occurs so one way of easily remembering this is oxidation is loss of electrons reduction is gain of electrons so oxidation will occur at the, cath at the anode where electrons will be lost and then they'll move using a wire to the other side where they will be gained to cause reduction so I believe we've answered that question so why is it so so one way you can think about it is because oxidation occurs at the anode and then at the cathode that's where reduction occurs question 2 says how are standard reduction potentials combined to give the standard cell potential for a spontaneous reaction so in a galvanic cell you have two half cells okay one is oxidation the other one is reduction now they are all originally written in form of reduction potentials so i actually have a list of them so if you look at these you can see that electrons are appearing on the reactant side in all these equations which indicate all these are reduction half reactions okay so in a galvanic cell you may have to, you are supposed to have two equations so if you have two equations a galvanic cell one thing that we know is the reaction is supposed to be spontaneous meaning that the cell potential is supposed to be positive okay so let's take two, two examples here if let's say you had uh, the copper with 0 0.34 volts and then you also add zinc with negative 0 0.76 how is that going to be which one is going to be the anode which one is going to be the cathode so if you reverse one the sign of the reduction potential changes okay so which one should we reverse between the copper and the zinc so that after adding them we should still get a positive answer so if we reverse the copper both are going to be negative so we just give us a negative answer now if you reverse the zinc it will become positive 0 0.76 and then if you add it with a 0 0.34 it will give us a positive result so in this case that tells us if we reverse zinc zinc will now appear as an oxidation reaction because we would have to start with the solid giving us zinc ion plus two electrons emitted which is an oxidation reaction and it will have a positive reduction potential which is now of course the oxidation potential if that does exist okay so now in other terms to answer the question that we have at hand instead of reversing this you can think about it as uh, so you expect zinc to be on the anode because it is undergoing oxidation and then copper to be on the cathode to be at the cathode okay so if we are to determine the e cell potential instead of looking at it as addition the other way you can reverse is by adding a negative on the part we have reversed so where, where have we reversed we reversed on the anode so in other terms it's cathode minus the anode so the negative changes the sign of the value of the reduction potential at the anode because it's supposed to be reversed in other terms so how are standard reduction potentials combined to give so it is what is at the cathode where reduction occurs the equation that remains as it is you change the sign of the anode so that's how you get the standard 
cell potential after combining the reduction potentials of the half cells. Oh, we're supposed to actually scroll down. <laughs> so um, we can go to question three just before we go to four. Uh, well, the third question says if uh, the E cell of copper had been chosen as a standard reference electrode and had been assigned a potential of 0, 0.0 volts, what would the reduction potential of the hydrogen electrode be relative to it? So, what would be the reduction potential of the hydrogen relative to the standard reference electrode, arbitrarily the copper 2 plus? So if we go to the reduction to the reduction potentials, we can actually see that hydrogen is actually the actual standard difference, and it being a zero, we have copper being somewhere above 0 0.34. So we can actually see that the difference we have is 0 0.34. Now if we take the zero to the part where we have copper, if that becomes zero, then we expect that going down we have negative. So we expect this one to be negative 0 0.34 okay because basically that is a difference that is there between copper and hydrogen okay so equally if we chose let's say any value on top let's say if we chose the, the yes if we chose iron there the same would be true if that becomes zero then going to hydrogen the difference would be negative 0 0.77 so therefore the answer is this negative 0 0.2 so one thing that you know is when they give you such a question in your exam, they will just give you the this equation for copper, the half cell. So you'll put 0 0.34 volts. So you know that originally hydrogen is actually the standard, right? So you understand that hydrogen is just 0 volts. So if that is the case, if now copper becomes like 0, and since you know that copper was actually 0 0.34 higher than hydrogen, so if copper becomes 0, then hydrogen is supposed to be less by 0 0.34, which makes it to be negative 0 0.34 volts relative to a copper of 0 volts. So that's the answer. Now, if we look at question 4, we need to make a sketch of a galvanic cell. Okay? So we've been given the short end of a cell notation. So how do you convert that? So usually the left is usually the anode, that is the cathode. We can actually make a confirmation by looking at the, the potentials that we have. Let's compare iron and is it silver? So if we check where iron is, that's where we have. Then AG, which I believe should be God, is uh, 0 0.8. So which one should we reverse if we are to maintain a positive answer? Remember, this, since these are both positives, if you reverse it, if you reverse it, it's supposed to become a negative. So we should reverse one that is less, so that we still remain with a positive answer. So the ion will be reversed, making the the anode right. So that's confirmed. So this remains the anode because supposed to be reversed, that is the cathode. So make a sketch of a governing cell. So something like this. Two different solutions. We can make sketch of the electrodes on both sides. We can have a wire joining them. Okay. So electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. So this is the anode, that is the cathode. So on the anode we've said that's where we have silver. That's where we have iron. Sorry. Okay. And then the other side will have the solid as well. Then in the solution here we have the iron ions equal on the other side as well. Then what is missing? We need to put a salt bridge. Let me use a uh, salt bridge.
bridge. Okay, so a sort bridge that was used was not specified, so you can just label it to be a sort bridge. So that alloy is indicating the flow of electrons. Okay, so indicate the charge on each electron. So which one is expected to be the positive, which one is expected to be negative? So the anode is actually negative because this is where oxidation occurs and so electrons will build up. Then the other side it is actually a positive, which will now attract the electrons from the other side. Okay. So we've indicated the, ch the charge, indicate the direction. Okay, we have indicated the direction. Write the balance equation. So a balance equation now. Okay. So I can erase the galvanic cell. So the half cell for the first part on the anode is oxidation. Oxidation is loss of electrons. So we have from the solid giving us reduction of the ion 3 ions plus emission of 3 electrons. And then for the other one is reduction, so gain of an electron to give us a solid at the cathode. So we need to balance the number of electrons, so we multiply by 3 and by 3. So if we get to come to add these, we are going to have ion solid plus that go to so I'm adding the react the reactants and the products okay so the number of electrons being lost and gained are supposed to be the same so if combine this this to give us the products that and this to give us the reactants and that is the balanced equation Question 5 on the other hand is uh, is also asking us, so you are supposed to write the F reactions and also the balanced cell reaction for the following galvanic cells. So whenever you see platinum, in most of the cases, it's because the actual F cells or F reactions don't have the solid that may represent them. Okay? I don't know if that makes sense. So it's like you only have aqueous aqueous so you can't have an electrode being in aqueous state an electrode is supposed to be in solid form so if you don't have it what basically happens is you use an unreactive metal like platinum to represent the electrode so on both sides i believe we didn't have solids in the half cells okay so we need to write the half cells so if you look at the first one what is half cell so we have that and that. So usually on the left we represent the anode. So we have ion 2 plus, okay, giving us ion 3 plus. So taking the left to be the anode, we expect that there will be an increase in the charge because that's where oxidation occurs. Oxidation occurs at the anode. So oxidation means loss of an electron loss of electron so why have i put a single electron because we are moving from a two to three which means a single electron was lost what else is remaining for the other side in all three giving us what plus the hydrogen that is there which is a reduction in itself giving us NO in gaseous state. I believe this is aqueous. So is that balanced? We can clearly see it is not balanced. How do we balance it? So if we check, here you've got three oxygen atoms. There you've got a single oxygen atom. So we balance oxygen by adding water. So we're going to add two more water molecules on the right. To ensure that we have equal number of oxygen atoms and then we can also add since we've introduced hydrogen there by introducing water so we have four of them on the right here you've got just a single so you can put a four to the hydrogen which i believe now gives us the balanced uh, 
half cell reaction there. Anything missing? So at this point, we need to observe a number of electrons. We need to balance the number of electrons in both equations. So in the second half cell, we don't we've not shown the number of electrons. Let me just clearly put that. So I've got four hydrogen ions. Uh, so here we've got a negative there, we've got four positives. The overall charge becomes uh, positive three. Then the other side there's nothing. So we are moving from three going to a zero. That is clear the reduction, meaning that three electrons were actually gained. So equally would have to multiply the other part by three as well to balance the number of electrons that were being emitted. Okay, so electrons can cancel out and then we can equally do the same. Combine the reactants together. Okay, so even without wasting much of your time, I can just so the, the balanced equation is just going to be three F E two plus and then I can on the other side I can just add the other one from the other reaction, ion as well. So that is a balanced equation. Don't forget to indicate the states aquas, aquas, aquas. And then we need to look at the other part. So you can actually, in most of the cases, they may actually give you the the half cells, okay? But in this case, where we've asked, it may be very difficult for them to give you. But since for practice, you can actually confirm with the table. You look at the values that are there to see if you are you were right in terms of uh, your calculations. Okay. And we can try. You can try to look for the half cells we had actually indicated there. Try to look them up somewhere. Okay. So the other one. Feel free to try it out. Try to indicate the the half cells that are there. So we expect this again on the left. Of course, this is like a salt bridge. So this is the anode. The other side is expected the cathode. Uh, so anode oxidation occurs. So the solid is supposed to lose an electron to give us an ion. I'm looking at the positive and the zero. So that is like loss of a single electron. On the other side, reduction. So nickel two plus gains the hydrogen that is reduction in itself giving us an O2 is it balanced not at all we need to balance by adding something so we need to add two water molecules to balance oxygens so two water molecules what else? We've introduced the hydrogens, so we need to add four of them. What else? So the moment we do that, here we've got one, there we've got four. So we'll actually get to cancel. And then our men are going to remain. Are they going to cancel? Let's wait, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. So you've got like four. So plus that one makes it five. So I'm actually supposed to put five there. But because of this one, which is going to cancel with one of them, it will still reduce to four. So this will just say, we can just cancel that out. So that you remain with four and four. Okay, what else? Are we balanced, are we balanced? Okay, so We've seen one is reduction, the other one is oxidation. So let's try to see how many positives we have here. You've got two positives. Then on the other side, you've got four positives. This is like this is now again where the issue comes. Let's try to see. Nikhil has got two plus the NiO2 is here in charge there. Okay, so it's not charged. So if we expect this one to be reduction, we're not supposed to actually reverse it, and like we have put it. So, so we have NiO2 appearing on the left, plus the four hydrogen ions, giving us 
two water molecules plus nickel two plus so electrons will appear here now two electrons were acted again so for us to balance the equation we need to introduce the two on top there so the electrons are actually balanced and then the, the full reaction will now involve this one coming to be part of the reactants that one coming to be part of the products the electrons are supposed to be removed so then you have your full balanced equation for question 5 question 6 Aluminum would displace tin from solution according to the equation. What would be the individual half cell reactions if this were the cell reaction for a galvanic cell? Which metal would be the anode, which the cathode? Okay, what would be the individual half cell reactions? That's a very sim simple question to answer. Okay. So look at this one and that other one. So you have got two aluminium solids giving us the aluminium three plus. So that is already oxidation. How many electrons are these? So try to check. They have got a zero. They have got like a three plus times a two, six plus. So six electrons were lost okay so that is like if you go back to the actual half cell without the balancing of electrons it would be just aluminum solid with three electrons but it's balancing the electrons we have six electrons and then the other cell for the tin So there we expect to have like six, uh, actually this is like reduction, so electrons were being gained, six electrons were being gained, okay, that is the half cell. So these are the two half cells that were actually there in this reaction after the balancing of electrons. Uh, which metal would be the anode, which the cathode? This is very simple for you to actually make an observation. So which one is oxidation? So oxidation is the first one. So aluminium is oxidation. So aluminium solid would be the anode. The cathode would be tin solid. Okay. Question seven. <coughs> The cell reaction during the discharge of a lead storage battery is that the standard cell potential is that what is the correct form of the next equation for the reaction at 25 degrees Celsius? So the next equation, I believe you know what it is. So it helps us to calculate the non-standard cell potential, okay, to be dependent on the standard cell potential minus RT. Um, over nf number of electrons multiplied by Faraday's constant natural log of q where q of course is like the quotient the reaction so this is going to be easy so the standard cell potential has been given to be 2.05 minus rt so the r there is already known to be 8.314 the temperature 25 you add the <laughs> i'm not forgetting this so anyway 25 degrees is equal to 298 kelvin you add like a you add a 275 so 298 kelvins the number of electrons if you check the number of electrons there so if you know just the number of electrons that actually are being transferred from one half cell to the other at two and then the Faraday's constant is 96.485. So the other part will have natural log. 
So N determines the number of it looks at the number of electrons. F looks at the Faraday's constant. T is the temperature in Kelvin. R is a gas constant. And then natural log of Q. So Q looks at the aqueous and gaseous states. So water was actually in liquid. So the only substance that qualifies to be part of the quotient is only sulfuric acid. Now what does that mean? So we know that it's actually products of a reactants. So all the wait, 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 am I actually right by saying that that only only the sulfuric acid is supposed to appear? I can see the the hydrogen is also in aqua state in this case. Okay. So what we may expect is the solids and the liquids, you take them as ones. Okay. So that's why we say in other terms we say only the aqua states and the gaseous actually appear in the K or Q expression from the study of chemical equilibrium. So for the products, we don't have anything in gaseous or aqueous, so just put the one over uh, the reactants. We have hydrogen plus, raised to the power 2, and then also sulfuric acid raised to the power 2. Remember we said the concentrations are supposed to be raised to the stoichiometric coefficients. So this is the expression of... So if we are given actually the concentrations of the hydrogen and the sulfuric acid, we are, sure we are going to actually even get to perform the calculation and determine the non-standard cell potential of that battery. Okay, so we are on question 8. What are the anode, the cathode, and the net cell reactions that take place in a nickel metal hydride battery using during discharge? And then what are the reactions when the battery is being charged? So during the discharge, you know some of these things there's nothing to explain. So actually a nickel metal hydride, so the metal is not actually specified, but we'll take M to represent the metal. So during the discharge, the metal first reaction on the anode will be the metal reacting with hydroxide to get the metal hydroxide and then an electron being Okay, question 9 now is the question we are looking at. How many hours would it take to produce 85 grams of metallic chromium <coughs> by the electrolytic reduction of chromium 3 plus? How do we answer that question? I think this is electrolysis. I actually made a very long video about it, so it shouldn't be like a struggle for most of you to basically get to figure it out. I think what is also important here is to understand the, the equation. So we have metallic chromium by the electrolytic reduction of that. So I believe the equation is you have you begin with chromium three plus, and then being reduced to chromium metal. So we can say chromium 3 plus gains 3 electrons obviously to give us chromium in its metallic form as a solid. Okay, so we can see we have to got 3 electrons here. So we need to determine the, the hours. And then we have uh, question 10. <coughs> Question 10 says, a large electrolysis cell that produces metallic aluminium from the aluminium ore by the ore route process is capable of yielding even up to 409 kg of aluminium in 24 hours. So by the way, this same process, I don't even know how to pronounce it properly, this same process is the process by which metallic aluminium is produced commercially. Okay, 
from the wall itself. So the actual equation is the aluminium ore. I don't know if this is used to be called bauxite. I've forgotten. <laughs> it should be called bauxite. Yeah, it's one of. Uh, anyway, so the action with carbon gives us the metallic aluminium and carbon dioxide. So this is actually the equation. Okay. Now, one thing that is actually stands out for me is the fact that this is also electrolysis so whatever we applied in question 9 can be applied to answering this question so except here we're trying to determine what current is required so let's look at the details that we've been given so you've been given the mass you have got the hours what else do we have um, I think that's the only information we have but I believe from the periodic table we should be able to get like the molar mass from the equation, we should be able to see the number of electrons that are being transferred. If you get any of the half reactions, okay. Okay, so actually the the summary of what is happening here is the aluminium that is uh, part of that is actually the aluminium three. If you look at the subscript there, so we have like aluminium three giving us aluminium in solid form. So what that indicates is this is reduction. This is like gain of three electrons. So we have three electrons. We've got the time, 24 hours. We've got the mass in kilograms. We've got Faraday's constant. So we should be able to get the, the current. Remember the, the current that we're supposed to get is supposed to be coulomb per second. Then you know that's it's current. So if that's what we are expecting, expecting coulomb per second and then our equation very important what is happening over here is like we've got aluminium 3 plus gaining three electrons to give us a solid okay so the mass here is 409 kilograms now we need to also get the, the molar mass of this very aluminium so a molar mass approximately we can just say 27 grams per mole. So 27 grams per mole approximately for every mole of aluminium. And then here we've been told assuming I would of 409 kilograms. And then the time is 24 hours, so we can take that to seconds by multiplying by 3600 tons per every hour. Those are the seconds that are there. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start. So what we need to get is kilo per second. So one thing that can give us a kilo per test of all is Faraday's constant. So 96.485 kilo. Now the units for Faraday's constants are more of electron. Okay, so I want this to stand. But we need to remove the more of electron. So we've got three moles of electron being gained per every mole of aluminium being produced. Okay. So we want the we also want the more of aluminium to go away so we can get the molar mass. So per every mole of aluminium again. We have like 27 grams. That's what the molar mass stands for. So already this is going. That is going. So we need again the mass to go on the bottom there, the grams to go. So we can multiply by the mass. 409 kilograms is multiplying by 10 to the power 3. So that gives us grams. So grams are also disappearing. Now we're not done. We need seconds. We need seconds. Where are the seconds going to come from? They are going to come from the time. So the time is supposed to be on the bottom if we are to get the seconds on the bottom. So it will be 1 over 24 hours. Now we, that is multiplying by 3600 seconds. So the hours have been converted to seconds. So 
we have kilo meter second which stands for ampere so for the top part 96485 multiply by 3 multiply by 409 times 10 to the power 3 divided by 27 divided by 24 divided by 3600 so here what we are <coughs> getting is 50,000 748.9 coulomb per second in other terms ampere so that is like the current that is required to produce 409 kilograms of aluminium in 20